Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I've got a haul. I don't really do hauls that often because I just don't buy that much fragrance anymore. But I do have a bit of a haul of things that have arrived maybe in the last month, maybe two months. So not all at once for sure. And there's not a lot here, but I've got a mixture of four bottles. So they're obviously the haul. Why am I doing cross fingers? <laughs> haul. <laughs> And then I've also got some samples as well. I've got the limited edition, brand new one that's already sold out from Andy Tower to sniff live. That's called Nexin. I'm going to sniff that live for the first time, thanks to Rich Mitch for sending me the sample. So we're going to do that, but we're going to start with the actual full bottles that have arrived recently. Let's start with... This one I ordered uh, a few weeks ago. That was it. I ordered it just before I went to Florence. I was really hoping that the postman would be super, super quick and I could actually take it to Florence with me because I'm a bit obsessed. It's this one here. It's called I Dreamed of a Rose and it's by Juliet Rose Perfumes. And I'm going to wear this one today, I think. Yeah, I am. I'm not wearing anything yet, I'm just out of the shower. I need a couple of sprays because I don't want to overwhelm my nose. I've just thought I've got loads more stuff to smell. So uh, I dreamed of a rose. It has quite a long note listing. I know there's violet in there as well as obviously the rose. I can't remember the other notes because to me it's such a rosy, I guess it's kind of fruity, fruity, rosy, very musky in the dry down. Uh, I, I described it on Instagram. I did a, a photo and a, a bit of a review on Instagram. But for me, it, it just feels like it, it starts off with like a fruity rose and then it gets quite musky. Just to say, I do really, really love this and I will be buying one more from this brand. I highly recommend you check them out. They're based in the UK, but they do ship internationally and they do samples. They're affordable fragrances. They're about... Bottles are between 40 and 50 something pounds, so really, really affordable. Samples are very affordable. Check out their rose sampler if you like roses in, per in perfume. Check out their rose. They've got a selection of four or five different roses. And that's why I ended up buying this one. And also I'm gonna be buying the black rose. I think it's called black rose musk or something like that. So that's my next one. That's a really incense -y sort of powdery resinous rose it's amazing so that one's next but yeah really happy to have that one and next let's talk about these two so i've had these a little while now and you would have seen uh, this one on either on youtube or on my instagram i have mentioned it but this one i haven't mentioned at all yet so these are from ikirio both from ikirio these were kindly sent to me by vincent from Dreamhouse House Curio, and these are Drifting and Rose of Venus. And let me start with Drifting. I had a sample of this and I was obsessed. I bloody love it. It's so comforting, so soothing, so soft, so fluffy, so peaceful, so cool. So it's not a warm fragrance, I don't think. I find it kind of cool. Uh, it makes me think of soft, fluffy snow. It's a lavender perfume, really for people that don't generally like lavender because it doesn't really smell like a normal lavender. Lavender to me always smells a bit peppery, a little bit green, a little bit herbal. It has a very distinct smell. You smell that purple floral thing but it has all those other little jagged edges, which I just don't love. It's not a particularly smooth smell to me, but here it's like Vincent took the lavender and he polished it up and he got rid of all the jagged edges and took away all that green peppery herbalness and just left the, uh, a fluffy purple floral there. And then he has coated it in layers of cashmere musk like it's not cashmere ran i don't think uh but it is like 
this fluffy, soft, musky sweetness. I don't think there's a vanilla note listed. It smells like there's a teeny bit of vanilla in here maybe. But it's like a, a, a vanilla musk, maybe even sort of same, same sense as what Iris gives you as well. So it's one of those really cloud-like perfumes. And I absolutely love it. It's perfect to go to bed. It's called Drifting. I mean, you totally can see why it's called Drifting. Drifting off to sleep to have a wonderful, soft and fluffy dream. <laughs> There's nothing sexy about this. It is very much cozy, clean, and it's inviting, but it isn't, it's not sexy. Like it's no white florals or anything that I, that I think make a fragrance sexy, but rather very, very comforting. Like the, the perfect teaching assistant would smell like this. Children would love to have a cuddle from someone who smells like this. It's just very, very soft and fluffy and lovely. I think I've raved about it enough. I really, really love this one. So this is Drifting from Ikirio. Uh, where's our picture? There. And then the other one from Ikirio. I haven't decided what I think of it yet. Uh, so this one, uh, Rose of Venus. The thing with this one is, is it's very, very strong. And it opens with some, I would say some woody aroma chemicals, some of those dry woody, woody ambers that many of us are a little bit averse to. But the weird thing is, usually those things, they just last and last. And they they kind of like build momentum normally. When those woody ambers are in a perfume, you don't necessarily immediately pick them up, but they just get stronger and stronger as all the other notes fall away. But this is different. So I definitely smell these woody amber notes to start with, but they seem to calm down quite quickly and fall away. Now I know there's a booze note in here. There's obviously rose, there's some resin. And it's actually really, really pleasant. It just, it, for me, it's just the beginning is a little bit harsh. The, those woody, sweet woody aroma chemicals, to my nose, I just find them a little harsh. They just don't gel with me. Similar in a way to, I guess, uh, to uh, Baccarat Rouge 540. Uh, those uh, sweet woody aroma chemicals, like a, a blend of, of woody ambers and something a little sweeter as well and i think i think if you like things like baccarat rouge 540 you're gonna adore the opening of this but it does as i say it softens it smooths itself out it's very very potent it's very long lasting it's really pleasant it's just for me the opening i don't love so that is rose of venus uh, i've had these a little while now i think i've mentioned them once or twice but I will just uh, mention them again. So this is my second bottle. That's my second bottle of Unspoken Mask from Francesca Bianchi. And as you can see, I have dented it really, really quite badly considering I've only had it maybe two months. So I thought I would share that with you. The dry down on this is amazing i will never get bored of it i will never ever 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 get bored of this one imagine if you had to stock up for life on the fragrance that you really really love the fragrances that you really really love out of my entire collection this would be the first one i would go out and buy a bucket of if francesca was going to be going out of business which will please Praise, praise the Lord, that will never happen. Or if she was going to discontinue Unspoken Mask, if that was going to be the case, I would buy a lifetime supply of this with, like, without a doubt. And so, of course, I do have the matching body oil, which I love. It really does smell very, very, very much the same as the perfume. I do think the base oil that Francesca uses in all her oils has a little bit of a scent to it itself which blends perfectly well with everything but you can kind of pick up on it is it like a woody smell not sure 
but it's perfectly pleasant but you, you can smell unspoken musk for sure and yeah the dry dang is amazing it's the most amazing iris and vanilla combination in that dry down the opening is a little uh, darker a syrupy sort of immortelle that's not really curry like more on the maple syrup side of things syrupy and then musky and a beautiful iris there is a magnolia in there i don't know that i pick up on it myself uh, to me, it's all about the dry down in musk, iris, vanilla combination that is to die for. So, unspoken musk there. Another bottle. This one I picked up in Florence. And this one's called Muscio. So on the back of the bottle, you have the name sort of in raised. So the bottle is... Um, oh, so the emblem on the back, which is for Santa Maria Novella, that emblem there. And then engraved on the bottle is Muscio. So that means musk in Italian. And let's spray this on a, a strip for now. So this is a really interesting perfume because I really got different things from it when I first tried it to what I got from it after I tried it again and then again. So also I think once I read a few Fragrantica reviews that made me see it in a whole new light and smell it in a whole new light because when I first smelt it, now I was smelling a lot of things all at once in the Santa Maria Novella store. Yeah, so when I first smelt it, I thought that it was a very, very clean musk, fluffy and lovely, but very, very clean and lightly floral. Then, I uh, read a couple of reviews. Someone reviewed it and said it was really filthy. And I thought, Are you sure? Are you sure? And then when I smelled it again, I was like, You're right. There is a layer of filth in here. Now, don't get me wrong, it's not all filthy. If you know Kiehl's musk, the original Kiehl's original musk, that is a bit filthy. And it's a similar filth to that but less filthy than Kiehl's musk I think so there's an aniseed opening I'm not sure what that is it could be a fennel it could be some sort of licorice no aniseed type no anise star anise maybe but for me I'm thinking fennel it's quite light but it definitely gives it like a almost a, mem a slightly menthol kind of feel and then you just get a lot of musk and a light floral. I believe there's a tiny bit of rose. It's one of those, it's very much your skin but better. It's not a statement. It's not a head turner. It's you just smell, you probably mostly smell clean when you wear it. It's only if someone was to sniff you right up close, fairly on in the dry down, so quite early on. If someone sniffs you right up close, they might they might smell a little bit of the dirtiness. But mostly, you're just going to smell clean. You're going to smell like you've, you, you're you wearing freshly washed clothes. You've got a nice body lotion on. Maybe they, they, people will think you can smell your shampoo or your body lotion or your shower gel. It's just one of those kind of almost nondescript fragrances but these kind of fragrances I think are really if you like your musks they're such a good thing to have because you can totally layer them I wouldn't spray this and then spray something immediately on top that's not how I do layering because it can go very very wrong if they're still wet I've done that and it's gone wrong so I don't do that but you could wear this for an hour or two and then spray something else on top. Or you could wear this in some spots on your body and something else in other spots on your body and then it just meets in the air. And that's how I like to layer. And I just think this one's great. This one's great to just sort of spray onto your clothes. Your clothes feel kind of um, fresh and clean and musky. So yeah, I really like that. Really glad to have that one. This is actually my Christmas present from my mum. And thank you, mummy. So mum sent me the money over so I could get this. It's Tower Le Maroc Pour L. Yes. I've wanted this for over a year now. I used to have it many, many years ago. And I guess I kind of got tired of it. Oh, it was such a commitment to wear because it was so strong. It just 
it lasted all day, all night, and it was projecting the whole time. And in the end, I wasn't wearing it much because I quite like to change up my fragrance, you know, what from from day to night. I don't always shower. If I'm not going out, I don't always shower again in the day. If I'm going out, I do. <laughs> but by the by, usually by the evening time, I want to wear something different. And with most perfumes, by that time, it's so light that you can. Not with this one. So I wasn't wearing it very much, but this is reformulated. And people normally complain when a reformulation is not as strong as it used to be. But um, in my opinion, in this case, this is a reformulation where it is definitely not as strong as it used to be. And that's a good thing because now it's just not such a beast. So you can, you know, you can, spray a reasonable amount and it doesn't massively project like it's i feel like it's a lighter projection than it used to be still perfectly nice it's still quite strong so your not projection is strong but rather your sillage as you move around that's when the fragrance is going to be sort of noticeable to other people let me get it out of the box so the box is nice it's a tin it slides up like this and then you have the bottle there so, yes, so, so, so happy to have this. I wore this yesterday for my caroling concert. Locally, myself and my choir went and performed at the Christmas market and the Dickens Festival. And it was really, really good. And this is great because it's freezing cold weather and this is quite a strong, rich, resinous fragrance. So, uh, Le Maroc Poel, I'm gonna put some here. You cannot get this on your clothes, it will ruin them. The colour, it sort of goes a bit yellow on skin. If you get it on your clothes, it will stain. Very strong, quite a spicy opening, but kind of like a cool spicy opening. I've got the, oh, there's no notes on there. But that, there's this card. And I got this from Les Santers, but Andy Tower has actually signed the card inside, which is nice. The notes in this one, I would say the main notes are rose and jasmine, but there is a lavender. Now this is a kind of lavender that I never really even knew was in there and never really noticed it. Now I know it's there, I get, it's like, you know I talked about drifting and how the all the herbal peppery facets are removed. It's like <laughs> Vincent from Dreamhouse removed those facets and he sent them in the post to Andy Tower and he put them <laughs> into this perfume. So I do get from the lavender, I don't necessarily smell the exactly lavender but I smell those aspects of lavender. They just add a little bit of grit and sort of spice and interest to the fragrance without it smelling at all like a lavender fragrance because the rose and the jasmine are so strong. Lavender doesn't really have a chance but what's great about this is the, I'm, I'm starting to smell it already, is the, it's like a, I think it's a labdanum. It's a really gorgeous, rich, sweet resin, or maybe even a combination of resins, and it's kind of sticky and smooth and lovely. So I think it's labdanum because it's making me think sticky because labdanum in, in its original form is sticky, a little bit like a tree sap. And, oh. I really love this one. So I'm so, 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 so happy to have it. I don't know whether I should wrap this up and put it under my tree and make myself not wear it now till Christmas. Let me know if you think I should do that. But part of me really, most of me really doesn't want to do that because I'm loving being able to wear it in this cold weather. As I say, it's a very strong and rich fragrance. It's so perfect for this cold weather. So yeah, that is... Le Maroc Pour L. If you want, I, I have reviewed this, but, and I think I might have even reviewed the new formula compared to my memory of the previous formula. But if you want a full updated review, now I have the full bottle, let me know. And let me know if you want reviews of any of these fragrances. It's about time I did a proper review. It's been a while, so I do know that I probably should do some reviews. That's it for the full bottles. And then now we are going to go on to some samples. Shall we do next, as we're on tower, let's do Nexim. So this is the brand new release. Uh, Rich Mitch sent me the sample he got from Les Santers. 
and it is now it sold out very quickly i think it sold out on the day it was released but i am seeing bottles on ebay some of them are really massively hyped up overpriced uh, but i saw one that was put up for 150 pounds and i think that was as a an auction so potentially it went higher but at least it's a little more fair if it's an auction but so you might be able to, if you're really desperate to find it, you might be able to find it secondhand. Go in the Facebook groups. If um, if Facebook's your thing, Facebook fragrance groups can be very handy to find hard to find things, discontinued things, limited editions. And generally speaking, the, fr the Facebook fragrance community don't usually overcharge. So yeah, if that what you want to do anyway next sim i don't know the notes i do know it's supposed to be quite citrusy so let's let's smell it oh okay yeah do you know what if you if i if you just held that under my nose and said what do you think that is i would have guessed it might be a creed fragrance i don't know why i'm saying that but maybe it's reminding me of one of the creeds so it's citrusy but there's this element to it that's like i guess ozonic so a bit like smelling fresh mountain air and I always say this when I talk about ozonic scent a bit like putting your head in a fridge as well that slightly sort of chemical clean cold smell it's quite smooth though it's, so it's not really zesty it's a very smooth citrus I'd say it's quite musky clean musk it feels like clean yeah very clean soft musk maybe even one of those aldehydes that smell a bit soapy in a very clean and smooth kind of way there's something else like a spice maybe like i'm not sure i wouldn't say cinnamon something almost rubbery like a spice that's almost rubbery i probably should have put this one on skin let me chuck this on my skin let's do it here and maybe we'll look we'll look up the notes as well yeah let's look up the notes okay i've got the notes up and i've put it on my skin Honestly, on skin, I don't like it as much. Um, this rubbery nature is really coming out. There's like a really strange rubbery scent here. So notes-wise, we've got vetiver, oris, bergamot, ambergris, lemon blossom, oak moss, geranium, cedar, sandalwood, orange blossom, lemon, rose, tonka, and musk. I don't know what it is in there. And none of those notes make me think of this rubbery smell that I'm getting. Now on the skin, it was much more muted. On the paper, I should say. It's there, but it's much more muted. And the muskiness and the citrusiness is stronger. And the clean, there's a clean woodsy smell in there as well. But on my skin, that rubbery smell it's unpleasant I don't like it it's I can still smell the fridge <laughs> I can still smell a little bit of the citrus a citrus smells lemony so it's bergamot I've got you got bergamot lemon and lemon blossom that that explains it it does smell more lemony than anything else honestly this is not for me. I, I don't like it. It's something. It's a bit smoky, like a smoky, rubbery smell. Like almost not quite burning tires, but burning tires. Maybe someone just skidded five minutes ago, and I've now walked past it, <laughs> and it's still just lingering in the air. It might get better. Probably oh, it's got to really. <laughs> it's got to really. Um, 
yeah this is not for me at all yeah uh, I think we'll just leave that one there uh, so that was Nexin I think I called it Nexim it's Nexin with an N at the end yeah I'm not feeling that so we will move on then so what do we have next oh I got two samples from Juliet Rose I thought you might like to hear about I added some samples when I ordered I dreamed of a rose but this one uh, Juliet got in touch and said did I want to add a sample so this is the one that she sent me very sweet it is boozy it's, uh, and it's woody Tahitian vanilla rum that one there that one there Tahitian vanilla rum yes it's a uh, clean woody so it smells like a cedar it smells like a cedar wood and uh yeah some rum and some vanilla infused in that rum it's actually really nice because the cedar wood stops it being too sweet some of these fragrances from Juliet Rose you, you might think they're too sweet and then when you actually smell them they're not too sweet some of them are really sweet though but the way that she has counteracted the sweetness of that vanilla -y rum with this what smells to me like cedar almost like sawdust it stops it being too sweet it's, it's um it's a good move i think too sweet is not and most people like sweet and a little bit of savory don't they like sweet and salty popcorn is the best so that is actually really nice i would like to try that one on my skin i'm i'm already a bit covered now but i will give that more wear at some point and then the other one uh jamaican vanilla cafe latte so i was curious about this one now i, I tend to shy away from really gourmand fragrances these days i like a touch of gourmand but not too gourmand but i thought i'd try it and sometimes if you add coffee it's a bit like adding uh a bit like adding the cedar you know sometimes if it's a bitter coffee it can help counteract the sweetness of the sweeter notes let's see because i haven't tried this one yet oh wow i mean this smells boozy as well actually so it, it smells like boozy coffee one of those and uh, what's that drink it's an alcoholic coffee drink i forgot what it's called but you know what i mean like really dark yeah oh wow <laughs> this is quite amazing i mean it's quite sweet it also smells a little dessert like it's it's making me think of what some sort of sponge imagine sponge you know the sponge fingers i think they're called lady fingers and then some desserts call for them to be like sat in the bottom of a dish and then soaked in alcohol yeah I, that's what i'm thinking of Tiram tiramisu i can never say it. i always say tiramisu as if it's like tiramisaurus rex tiramisu it's more like tiramisu I, and yeah it's not massively sweet don't get me wrong it's pretty sweet but it is not ridiculously sweet Re a, a bit almondy as well very very nice gourmand lovers it, this is done very nicely it's not too heavy-handed in any way like sometimes gourmands can feel almost flat because they're so damn rich and heavy in those sweet notes this has got nuance it's not just like a flat linear smell there's I there's in each breath inwards I'm getting different bits and pieces at the same time honestly quite amazing gourmand lovers coffee lovers tiramisu lovers tiramisaurus rex lovers you need to try this one so it's called Jamaican Vanilla Cafe Latte. Maybe the Jamaican is the booze. I don't know the notes, but maybe there's some rum in this as well, which it definitely smells boozy, which is making me think of tiramisu, tiramisaurus rex. It's, boo it's, a, it's a boozy, rich dessert. And it's really, I, honestly, if I wore this, I would expect people to be queuing up to eat me. <laughs> which is of course what we all want <laughs> okay 
let's move on. So I've had these a little while. Um, Wales Perfumery got in touch with me on Instagram and they asked if they could send me some samples, which is very kind of them. I said, yes, please. I will happily try them. And they are obviously from Wales. Uh, I haven't even opened the little card they sent me. They sent me a nice card and uh, we're sealed with wax. I mean, how cool is that? So I will have a... We'll open that now. So we've got some information on the fragrance, one of the fragrances they sent me, Star Siren. And then I, I guess some more information about the brand. So it was on very nice quality paper. So I won't read all of this to you, but we do have notes here, which is handy. So we're gonna smell some perfumes from Wales Perfumery. Now they, they packaged it very, very nicely. Then I unpackaged it and not, uh, not so nicely. So they sent me some samples and the travel spray. So the travel spray is this. So it's called Star Seren. Spoiler alert, I have tried all of these already because uh, impatient, us frag heads, we can't help ourselves sniffing new things when we have the chance. I've got to be honest with you, these aren't quite my style. They all smell very natural, but they, I guess, sort of, they smell sort of green, natural, which is not quite my thing. I don't really like green smells and, and marine smells. So this one is, I think if you like some, if you like things like Pacific Rock Moss from Goldfield and Banks, I'm not saying it smells the same, but if you like that ballpark, this one smells green and airy and a little bit like there might be some seaweed or something. Definitely got that, maybe like a slight ozonic scent to it. Also it might have something called Hydrodumersino, I think it's called, which is it's in some of the Cree fragrances like Green Irish Tweed gives it a greeny, it's a greeny type scent. It's not my favorite. I'm, I'm generally not a fan of it, but it's a very natural smelling, sort of earthy, natural green type scent. Uh, I might be in here, I'm not sure. But let's see what they say, if they do say anything. Oh, here we go. Yuzu, Cedrat, Jasmine, Green Tea Absolute. So there's a green note for sure. Magnolia and Water Lily. So there, you've got this watery nest. Sandalwood and ambrette seed. Honestly, very natural smelling. I don't know if they're, I don't think they're all natural. I'm not sure. I don't think they are. Very, very natural smelling. They remind me a little bit of, uh, is it Heckles? Heckles in Margate, who are an all natural perfume company. They actually go out and extract things from the local area and make tinctures and things like that and it smells like something they would make. So it smells very, very natural in an outdoorsy green kind of way. Green and watery. So not my thing, but I think it smells really nicely done. No, of though, none of those sharp, harsh, dry, screaming aroma chemicals that I don't like. Very, very natural smelling. So if that's, if, uh, watery and green are your bag. I really recommend uh, checking it out. Star Seren is that one. And then we have the littler samples. And I think I did try them all. So it says Coast Forest Country. That's the sample pack there. I don't know what they're charging for their fragrances. I don't think they're mega expensive though. I think they were fairly affordable from memory. I will put a link of course to their website below. This one is called Forest. So I mean, I already know when you call a fragrance Forest, it's not gonna be for me, because as I say, I don't really do green stuff very much. I don't mind a little green hint here and there, certain greens, freshly cut grass, dewy grass, those kind of scents are quite like, but not dark, more darker greens and earthier greens. This does smell like it might have a bit of a woody amber in it but not in any really overdone way, very gentle. It smells like a dry 
forest floor so it doesn't smell really lush and wet it smells more dry and earthy with a little sweetness from what smells like some sort of woody amber but it's not harsh it really isn't harsh definitely smells like a sweet dry woody amber but mixed with earth earthiness not as green as I expected not really that green at the moment sweeter than I would have thought for a, a fragrance called forest but very very pleasant so that's forest next up is country this one's got to be green surely surely <laughs> but you never know you never know country yeah, and much greener um makes me think and moist uh makes me think of tomato plants like walking into a a lush greenhouse um what's the word another word sort of like moist Yeah, it's like walking into a warm greenhouse with lots of moisture in the air. And I've forgotten what the, the word is for that. Gentle, diff gentle nuances, almost like a peppery feel to it, but green peppery. Very, very nice, very, very natural. A little bit of sweetness. Maybe there's a hint of some floral in here. Something a little green floral this is actually really nice I want to try this one on my skin it's still it's a very natural smelling perfume outdoorsy the way that Jo Malone really used to be and I guess they still are in some ways those Jo Malone fragrances they just smell like a walk, a walk in the country a walk in the park you know just very very natural no serious sweet note like no thick sweet syrupy notes no nothing really it's not perfumey so much as realistic nature and yeah i really get that from this i think this one and, and a, a light woodsiness underneath a clean woodsiness very nice a little bit cozy almost i, I wonder if there's some cedar in here this one's really nice actually so uh, maybe we will pop this one on skin here seeing as we're nearly done god this is a long video i wonder if you're still with me is anyone still with me if you're still watching pop a banana emoji if we even got a banana emoji if we've got a banana emoji pop it in the comments and i will give you a virtual high five for sticking around Yes, it's very lush and I still can't find, I can't find the word for moist. And when you're talking about weather, humid, humid, humid. It's lush and humid to start with. But on my skin very quickly goes more into the woodsy and slightly floral territory. Musky, slightly peppery, slightly green. You think about the country, but it, it sort of is like a walk in the country, but it's not, there's no muck spreading going on. There's nothing dirty or anything here. It's, it's all very clean. Yeah, it, it's really nice. It's a very peaceful scent. I actually like that. I'm so surprised because just the sound of it, country, I don't know. I just wasn't expecting to like it so much. So I really like that. And the last one then is Coast. Now I really wouldn't expect to like this one because I don't really like marine scents. Fragrances that have things like seaweed absolute in them or those aroma chemicals that create the smell of the sea and the, and the sea breeze and all of that kind of stuff. Just generally don't like them very much. It's just not, not my taste. And this smells like it might have a sort of seaweedy note but it's not pungent or anything you know when seaweed sits in the sun and you get this really disgusting rotten smell coming up if you walk by the sea and the seaweed's been sat 
rotting in the sun. It's absolutely gross. Don't worry, it does not smell like that. <laughs> Yeah, there's something really bright and fresh. I don't know if there's some citrus here. I would say there's some citrus. It's like something, le uh, lemon, I think. Yeah, it smells like lemon. Maybe a herb or two. Maybe like a thyme or something like that. I mean, lemon and thyme work so well together. And just a hint of... Uh, I don't know if I'm... It may be in my head sauce. My head's saying seaweed because of the name of the fragrance. It's very gently marine. It's not, I don't smell any of the aroma chemicals that create marine scents that bother me, which is great. I think, like it's nothing like an Issy Miyake. I actually enjoy the smell of cool water, for example, on other people. I quite, you know, there are some marine scents that I really enjoy. This is really nicely done. And I'd say again, more like the Pacific Rock Moss Ballpark. Nothing like an Issey Miyake. You know what, I'm, when I say Issey Miyake, I'm talking about the classic. Is it just called Issey Miyake? You know what I mean, that cl the original classic Issey Miyake aquatic scent. It's not like that, but there is a gentle, there's a gentle hint of a, a marine element that is not harsh, sharp, too much. Yeah, actually, really nice. If this is your genre, and if you if you want something that's more natural smelling, I really recommend checking these out. I would say they really have got the the natural outdoorsy smell here in all of them, except maybe the one with the sweeter woody amber. Was that the first one? Forest was it? The first sample that I tried, not the travel size, that one was probably the least, not that it didn't smell like there were some naturals in there, but out of all of them, that was the least natural smelling. Everything else is smelling very, very natural. I don't know how long they last, so I can't tell you any more than what I'm smelling right now, but I do think that based on the smell, that they, they feel like they're made of very nice materials and they have been blended beautifully. They all smell very beautiful, very natural, very sort of smooth. So yeah, thank you to Wales Perfumery for sending me these samples. It's taken me a little while to talk about them. Here they are. And that, I believe, is everything we have finished finally. So thank you so much for sticking around. Hopefully I will see you in another video. Bye.